Yes. Dr. Ayman Salam. Uh, sorry, Ayman Salim. <laughs> uh, to be honest, the venous injury, uh, I found venous injury the most challenging uh, injury uh, in comparison to arterial anywhere in the body. So we'll go through uh, IVC injury quickly. Traumatic injury to IVC is an uncommon but f frequently mortal event. The American Association for Surgery of Trauma prospective observational vascular injury treatment brevet registry was queried from november 2013 to january 2019 demonstrated that survival is likely related to ivc injury location and the total injury burden ivc injury account for 30 up to 40 percent of abdominal visceral vascular injury and the overall mortality up to 40 percent IVC being a retroperitoneal structure uh, and safeguarded by the multiple abdominal viscera has pretty less likelihood of being ruptured in case of trauma with the reported incidence up to 5% in penetrating and up to 1% in a plant abdominal trauma. As it, uh, it is the most commonly required vessel in the uh, injured vessel in the trauma, accounting about 25% of the abdominal vascular injury. Despite all the advancement in preoperative service, mortality remain uh, exceptionally high, reported up to 65%. And this table shows the anatomy. Uh, especially we are talking about the most practical point which is a segment so we classify or divide the IVC to three segment uh, the mechanism of injury uh, may be blunt or penetrating or uh, uh, iatrogenic especially during excision of an abdominal tumor Factor causing IVC injury include complex trauma, intraoperative complication, tumor invasion. Among them, complex trauma and intraoperative complication are more common. Hepatic, renal, and pancreatic cancer are the most common cancer invading IVC, which explains the poor prognosis of this cancer at an advanced stage. Uh, IVC injuries are generally combined with other injuries uh, to remaining vessels and adjacent organs. So uh, we, we, we divide the IVC to infrarenal segment, suprarenal segment, and suprahepatic. Suprarenal segment, we can divide to, to two subgroup, uh, infrahepatic and retrohepatic. And this actually is the most important practical point because it helps us uh, the way of management. And this is the three segments. Here. Uh, as all you know, clinical manifestation of IVC injury, like any uh, vascular injury, uh, starting from hypotension, may go up to shock and abdominal uh, organ uh, injury or retroperitoneal hematoma or intraperitoneal hematoma as well. Uh, go thoroughly, uh, quickly through the diagnosis. We usually depend on our clinical and uh, observational uh, condition of the patient on arrival, but we, we still need to do some investigation. Usually we start with non-invasive ultrasound. Uh, ultrasound can help in the diagnosis treatment guidance, may indicate the amount of seroprotonium and hemoprotonium and abdominal fusion and their for has a specific value in assessing the amount of blood loss. Uh, CT of the chest and the abdomen locates the segment of IVC where the injury occurs and assesses the severity of injury and the rupture size. Uh, we may need sometimes for IVC for localization of site of injury to put a plan for treatment or doing magnetic resonance spectroscopic imaging. This examination is actually an emerging high-tech method of radiological examination, has a unique benefit of non-invasiveness and absence of ionizing radiation-induced injury or bony artifact. 
also allow for clear observation of anatomically changes and the small injury to IVC. Moreover, there is no need to use contrast. Uh, at last, if you are not sure, so we can take the decision to do a laparotomy for exploration. And this quickly shows the hematoma around the IVC and the irregular irregularity of the wall of IVC. And so coming to the treatment, usually we start with conservative treatment or open surgical reveal or endovasculars. Usually conservative treatment, usually for a segment or the infrarenal segment, provided the, the, the condition of the patient stable and we have a chance for close observation actually close observation is mandatory because we may change our mind at any time to explore surgical repair in the majority of cases uh, especially penetrating trauma through midline laparotomy and we may extend the incision it depends on how much is the injury far uh, most important point actually and uh, we, we, I want to make a stress on it, proximal and distal control. Uh, for me, actually, I, I, I am very keen to not uh, putting uh, a good, compressing and remove it. So uh, the patient usually lost a lot of blood. So the most important point, try to do pinpoint the pressure by any means, even by your fingers. And if you localize the bleeding, so you can put a blend to put a proximal and the distal control. If you can do it with clamp, vascular clamp, okay. If not, you can just use your finger or as Professor Samah show us, compress with any instrument, proximal and distal too. Also, we can use endovascular technique by puffing uh, a balloon from inferior from the femoral or the jugular until you reach the site of bleeding and inflate to just try to save time until you may need to do exploration but still endovascular uh, less than two percent of cases but actually it is growing uh, here's the double balloon catheter uh, I, Unfortunately, it's not, it's not available in Egypt, but you can imagine the technique. This balloon, about 70, uh, 70 centimeter long, and you can introduce it from the jugular of the femoral until you, you pass the site of injury and inflate. Uh, it, is, it is really seven uh, French size. Rapidly, this is the algorithm for penetrating abdominal injury. If the patient is unstable, so we usually going for exploration. Uh, patient condition uh, is, is very important, especially uh, if the lesion in the segment one, subhepatic or retrohepatic, this is the most dangerous and the carrying bad prognosis uh, in general. Uh, the best area uh, for uh, easy control, usually infrarenal, easily accessible, and you can uh, control this segment easy. Uh, what you are going to do, you can do venography, what, whatever the time of venography, or even you may, uh, at the end, you may need to ligate. Uh, no problem to ligate the IV to save the patient's life and the post-operative sequelae or complication as regard to the uh, swollen lamp uh, usually, usually doesn't need to do fasciotomy, usually pass smooth. Outcomes and the mortality, early identification of IVC injury is crucial to survival. Operative experience is relatively uncommon. Operative experience is relatively uncommon for many surgeons. Several studies have concluded that improved survival ultimately depends on the grade of injury, injury location, and presence of hemorrhag hemorrhagic shock on admissions. Many studies uh, showed 
mortality of the sobra hepatic usually high may reach up to 100% uh, sobra hepatic 78% retrohepatic 33% Increased survivability over the years has remained greatest with infrarenal segment injuries. Concomitant injury increase in mortality because increase the burden of the surgery. Take home message. Early outcome is still negatively influenced by the hemodynamic status of the patient on arrival, but result of successful repair are durable. Rapid diagnosis and the vascular control are essential to limit mortality after traumatic injury of IVC. In this situation, retrohepatic IVC injury carries the worst prognosis. Endograft repair of traumatic injury of IVC is technically visible and effective to rapidly seal the bleeding tear. Magnetic uh, management protocols need need to be established to decrease the high mortality rate still carried by traumatic IVC injury till now. Thank you.